Hi guys, welcome back. We have a very special video today with another very special guest. Well, a repeat special guest. It's Ahal11 here, and we're going to be ranking the Illyrian factions, the brand new Illyrian factions, and a little sneak peek behind the scenes. We have already ranked our own <laughs> our own factions, and they were quite different, weren't they, Ahal? <laughs> yeah, we have different ways of viewing things. Yeah, so we're going to be ranking all of these factions. It won't be too long a video today, guys, um, but we are going to be ranking these factions. And we're going to be ranking them based on starting position, units, how cool they are, you know, sort of the feel of the faction and how difficult they are as well. So it's, of course, no ranking is ever objective, guys, unless you have some empirical data behind it. So uh, this, of course, is our opinion. So go down into the description down below and rank them yourselves. I'll put the link to this ranking there and put it into the discord where, where do you want it in the discord a helm so you can post your own rankings guys on the discord in the developer diaries discussion channel and uh you can call us idiots whatever you want but we're gonna have some fun with this and we pretty much have opposite opinions on most of these so they're all gonna end up in b <laughs> basically it's yeah. what's gonna happen yeah. um so w should we get started with the rdai then um a help. Yeah, where let's get would started. You, where would you put the RDA AI? Well, based on what I'm seeing from your campaign, I'd probably put them. They're not easy. No. So I'd probably put them around A or B, because um, they're definitely not going to be an easy faction. But they are the RDA AI. But they're probably the most well-known Illyrian faction to a to a casual fan. They do have probably the strongest roster out of all of them. Um, as they have Noble Spearmen, Noble Cavalry, and Epilectoi. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the thing is, they start off with, uh, I think, let me see here. They start off with Nestos and Glindetianopolis. Is that, yeah. That's how you say it. Those are two villages, which... Yeah. Are undefensible and then Narensopolis, which is just a town. Mm. Um, so really they only have two legit settlements. But if it's not like Epidaros is very uh, valuable either. So um I would say maybe even B. Like I mean, yeah, I, I personally would put them a little bit higher because like I think the campaign is so interesting because you're right in the middle, but I am willing to go with B based on what we're ranking them off because you know, they start with only one settlement basically able to recruit anything as well, which is a big factor. So, yeah, they're, they're not very, right. like, they're not strong at the start. All the land as well, just so you know, guys, is low fertility. Like, there's no good land for growing cities. So, yeah, very difficult faction in terms of trying to grow up to being larger cities and stuff like that. Um, but really interesting faction because you're right in the thick of it. But, yeah, I think I think B is fair. I think B is fair. Mm -hmm. cool so let's move on to the uh the day city eights then probably the mm -hmm. hardest faction out of all of these um yeah very very difficult faction inland w w land that's so much worse than even the rdai or anyone else actually on this list to be honest <laughs> they do um they have arduba at a large town in Hedham as a town and be honest with you Arduba and Hedham were both proposed by the historians before the Deicitiates became a faction to both be villages hmm. so um the only reason I made one large town and the other a town is just to give them some sort of playability as a player and survival rate of AI but yeah I mean you're literally the hillbillies of the yeah. Illyrians you're basically in basically in Appalachia of mm. Illyrian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's no big trees. There's no ports. Um there's no like metropolitan center. Um you're kind of in the dark, really. And in yeah. his history they weren't really known about until much later. So yeah, I'd say um I would say D. D. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, that, I mean, they're a very interesting faction again, but yeah, in terms of strength, like, 
you're also you also start, I believe, like with minus three thousand or minus four thousand per turn. So you're pretty screwed. <laughs> like it's not nothing nothing there's like nothing good against them. But if you are the player out there looking for a an extreme challenge, the Day City Eight, that's the one for you. But um yeah, let's move on to the uh the Dardanians then. My personal favourite faction. So <laughs> Obviously, you know where I'm going to put it. But, uh, <laughs> really cool faction. Not the greatest land as well. I mean, this is kind of a common theme through all of the Illyrian factions, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, not hugely fertile land. But, great units. Fantastic unit roster. You even get pikemen. Um, and you have a choice of where to go. Like, your start is really interesting again. Like, you can... You know, you're not forced into any direction, depending on whether the AI declares war on you. But you can go into Macedon and Paeonia uh, through the Thracians. You could go down towards the Illyrian Kingdom, towards the RDAI, towards the coast. Or you could go north into the Celts of the Scordisci. So, I don't know. I personally think they should be S tier, but what do you think? Um, I would say A. Because just as you can go anywhere, you can also be attacked from anywhere. Um, especially if you're like playing very, very hard, very hard extreme mode. Um, you got the score Disky to the north, the Paeonians to the south, bordering you, right? The Dendalete border you. Yeah. Um, the Tribali border you. You do have the Thracian CG at Radiaria. You do have um, a couple rebel settlements uh, in Damastion and Perus Diopolis. And then you have the Illyrian CG bordering you to the south in two settlements. Uh, but even uh, you kind of border the Illyrian kingdom too. So in the way the AI works, it's like as long as they're bordering you, they will attack you somehow, some way. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if the Illyrian kingdom went through the Illyrian CG to get to you. And I believe the Libeate also border you. So I'd say A, not S, just because it's not as easy as maybe one would think it would be. I think it's as easy as how skilled you are. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's an easy, easy faction, but I just think like the unit roster is so good and it's so interesting. Um, but yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy to defer to an A for now uh, until we get to the end, and there's nothing in S. <laughs> right, and we'll, I, I, see about, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Let's move on to the Del Mate then. And if we're talking about infertile land, these guys basically live in in the mountains. So um, yeah, not a huge amount of fertile land, but quite an interesting faction in terms of in terms of their history and also very strung out like they are basically just a snake like their faction start is just a snake so you can pretty much just get cut to pieces by the enemy you do start bordering the uh, bordering Issa right as well so um you can get some pretty rich land quite quickly but again at the same time you can get taken out really quickly as well so um I would say like I personally would put them put them high because I, I really like their start it's quite interesting but again in terms of their strength not so strong and they have the northern Illyrian roster which we know is so much worse than the southern Illyrian roster in my opinion anyway <laughs> so actually actually they have the southern Illyrian roster oh okay they have the northern Illyrian general right which yeah. is as we've seen uh, impactful uh, in a negative way um, but <laughs> As far as their actual <laughs> roster, they have a Southern Illyrian. But um, I think they only get the Epilectoi. I do not think they have the Noble Spearmen mm. or the uh, Noble Cavalry. Yeah. So it's kind of a hybrid. They're an interesting one. But they have the Dalmatian Thereoforoi, which is a very strong unit. Um, I believe they're an elite yes. unit. And then we have, they also have the Dalmatian Footmen, which are a professional unit. Mm. So I'm... I'm... So the way that they... They're tough because the way I see it, knowing how you play and like other aggressive players, um, you could knock out Issa off the coast right away. 
Yeah. Um, all you have to do is win one decent battle. You win that battle. You take Epechi on Salona. Um, Trigurion, depending on how your uh, horses are holding up, is right next to it. You could probably take out two settlements in a, mm. a couple of turns. Um, Delmium is right there for retraining, too. Yeah. Um, you also have an easy, if you want to chip away at the RDAI, you could easily grab Nestos before mm. they upgrade it or like what you've done is wait till they upgrade it and then take it before it gets walls uh and from there i mean you have a couple options you could then go for the kill on issa and take out their island settlements or you could then uh, i mean if i was playing i would go then and take out the day situates before they gathered enough strength because by taking them out you're eliminating your your uh northeast threat at least for a little bit until the score disky expand yeah um so i would put it i honestly put it with the dardanians i do believe it could be Ooh. difficult i'd also say it could be very hard depending on who i mean i i think it'd be easy based off the skill but it could also be hard based off your skill so um i would put it with the dardanians because i don't think it's as tough as the rdai yeah, but they have better settlements, bro. Yeah, but the RDA is just so much better roster and more interesting. I don't know, man. The Dalmatian three hundred four A are a very good unit, and they throw jabs, have great armor and shield, and they're an elite unit. I would put them up against the Noble Spearmen any day. Yeah, but you got Noble Spearmen and Epilectoi and Noble Cavalry for the RDA. Dalmatians, the Dalmatians have Epilectoi too. Oh, okay. And they have a better starting position. Hmm. See, they I don't, don't have they don't have two villages in a small town out in the middle of nowhere away yeah, from the true. But it feels in uh, fact, they have two large towns. Do they? Two large towns. Yes. Okay. Delmium and Petovia. Okay, well I'll I'll allow them to be in A as long as they're below Dardania. Ooh. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't think okay, okay. All right, all right. Here, how about this? I will give you Dardania as S if you move RDA RDAI up to A. No. <laughs> okay, why not? It's a fair trade. Well, yeah. Okay. 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 But below Del Bate, though. Below Del Bate. Uh, you mean because... below Dardania? Yeah, well, as in RDAI below Del Mate. So, oh, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah. for sure. Yeah, I, I completely forgot we can rank it that way. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. History, then. And in my opinion, we're talking a solid D tier here. Three settlements, trash settlements, right next to the Liberni, right next to rebels with massive garrisons. Like... The only thing you can do is either go north and then you're going to get attacked by the Liberni anyway, or you can go and fight the Liberni, which you could probably win, but the Liberni are going to be a lot stronger than you. And in my opinion, just probably the least interesting out of all the Illyrian factions in terms of playing them because you're not in the thick of it. Unlike unlike the Del Mate or the RDAI, even the Day City 8s to some extent, they're like right in the thick of the action. There's loads going on, people fighting each other all over the place, making it like pure chaos, which is really fun. Whereas the history is just going to be a more mundane, slow, <laughs> slow campaign, in my opinion. So I think D, <laughs> but what do you think? I, if I could give them an I for incomplete, that's what I would give them because that's exactly what they are. Um, I imagine a future when Italy is done and maybe some Celts are done that the history could be a massively interesting and challenging campaign. Having mm. you would have the Veneti to your west and the yeah. Tariski and uh, Norisi to your north. Um, so you'd be surrounded, and then you'd have the threat of the Romans, right? And then you, mm. here's the other thing: they're not only they're incomplete with as far as their rivals are concerned. They're also incomplete with their uh, unit roster. Yeah. So they have half a unit roster right now, and really they're just kind of borrowing um, no the Northern Illyrian roster, hmm. which I'm not saying that the whole roster is going to be thrown away when they're ready, but they're going to be taking a lot of Venetian units. Yeah. Once we do the Veneti, because they're Venetian, they're 
very closely linked to the Venetians. But mm. since we don't have an I incomplete, I would still put them as D because um, I do think it's a hard campaign. And this would actually, I know they're not interesting right now, but I would actually like to see you do a challenge campaign as them to see if you could like take out the Liberni and actually like make yourself as something. Um, I think that would be a decent challenge mm. as we are right now. So they yeah, do, D. They, they do have the history in Swordsman, but from what I remember, I don't think they're a, a great unit anyway. Um, I think they're just standard swordsmen. I don't think they're yeah. even professional. So then we move on to the Iapodes, the Iapodes, the Iapodes, whatever you want to call them. What would you say oh. for those bows? Th those bows? Those boys? <laughs> um, they're kind of mysterious, to be honest. I don't even know if we had a lot of beta testers tested them, um, but I would probably put them in C. Yeah. Um, because... You do have a CG to your north in Sagestica, but it's probably one of the best defended CG settlements that are in the game for the Illyrians. So that's not like an easy early conquest. You might lose. You might lose. And even if you won, it's going to be a bloody battle. You'd have to go straight back to Matulum to retrain. Mm. You do have three settlements. You get a large town and two towns. Um... You start you start at war with the Liberni as well, so you do start at war with the Liberni, and the way the armies are looking, they they do have a bit of a distance to get up to you. Hmm. You could um, Tarsatica has no walls, and then it's Asin Asi Asianites, or it's a crazy name. <laughs> um, you could possibly knock out their two coastal settlements to develop some sea trade. But once their army, again, you'd have to retrain because their army literally is right next to one of your towns in yeah. Agarunta. Yeah. So they could take that. So you might be kind of playing cat and mouse with them, seeing as your armies are distant from each other, but you border each other. Mm. Um, there is Splonum right to your east. That's an easy, easy take. But honestly, you'd have to go pretty, you'd have to kind of go around Sagestica and into the Pannonian rebel territory before you could do anything else, really. And that's, it'd probably be a couple turns before you do that. Yeah. And at that point, you're stretching yourself thin because the Liberni could attack you. It, the history or a settlement away from bordering you, they could attack you. And the Delmate also border you. Hmm. Uh, they could come up for you. So I would put them in a C category. Here's the other thing. They do get um, a sword unit with chain mail, but it's a reform. Yeah. And then there are elite spearmen, elite I believe, spearmen, in the late yeah. game as well. And they have chain mail. So if you can survive to the late game, your unit roster is pretty decent because you have two chain mail units to, yeah. to kind of make yeah. your northern Illyrian roster better. But it's a tough early start. Not as tough as the day city to the history, though. So I'd put a C. Yeah, and I also don't think there's anything that's that interesting about the campaign. It's pretty much just a one-on-one -on -one with the Liberni, and whoever comes out on top, you're all right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. think there's anything really redeeming in terms of like, oh, they should be higher because they were really impactful in history and really interesting. And yeah, no, I, I think they're I think they're they're right there at home in there. Uh, in C tier. So um on to the Illyrian Kingdom then. Mm. And very difficult <laughs> but also mega mega interesting. I mean it's basically doing the Epirus campaign but as an Illyrian faction rather than a Greek faction. And to your north you have the Labeateans, you have the Dardanians to your northeast you have the um, Paeonians to your northeast too. You have Macedon. You have Epirus to your south, as well as the GCS and the generic Illyrians. So, I think a solid A tier. Like very difficult, but if you like challenging campaigns, probably out of all these, maybe except the RDAI and the Dardanians, the most interesting. I think it'd be a toss up between those three at which campaign would be the most interesting. So I think solid, easy A tier at least. A tier. Yeah. A tier. 
Yeah. Dude, I don't think so, man. Based on what I know from the beta testers, this is a B. Mm. Like, it is so difficult. Yeah, but that, that doesn't matter. Like, if you're having a load of fun, why does it matter if it's really difficult? <laughs> okay, what, kind of, what kind of ranking system is this? Well, like, your, your roster's still really good. Um, like, your you start with a lot of cities um, that are better fertility and better trading cities than probably what you get up north because you'll be able to uh, trade with actual rich nations like Rome and... Uh, <laughs> okay, um, so I mean, what's strategy? You just start taking out as many Antigonid settlements as you can before your, their Doomstacks approach? I mean, because there's no easy expansion. I mean, you got a full stack CG in Apollonia. Yeah. Uh, well, between Phyllis and Mantia, you have a full stack CG in Illyria. You've got Durnion in the north, which might be takeable, but it's right next to a full stack of Labeate, basically. Yeah. You have a decently stacked rebel settlement. So any any first turn conquest is with... Um, you're going to suffer. Now, you do have an interesting starting army because you you um you start with a good Illyrian army, but you also get some Greek AOR from Epidomnos. Mm. But still it's like you're gonna go toe to toe with the Antigonids and that's gonna be fun with an Illyrian roster. Yeah. After we saw what we went through with an Epirote roster. Yeah. Armor piercing, bro. Armor piercing without any armor of their own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't have the cavalry that they have. I mean, you know how many Thessalian cavalry Antigonids start with, and you don't uh, have yeah, that's true, you yeah. don't have that straight you don't have that straight shot in the Thessaly like you do as Epirus. Well, you have to deal with like Nidos and Pelion and the weak kind of backwater northwest settlements of Macedon, like Stimbara, Heraclea, Lincestis, Argos, Aresticon, Bocaria. I mean. I think... These are all weak, and then it, by the time you get that far, you got the Paeonians bordering you, and you know how the Thracian roster is. Oh, I think I think you'll be okay against the Thracian roster, to be fair, compared to Antigonids. But um, yeah, I know I know it's difficult, but it's just so interesting. <laughs> but I think all right, well, I, I I'll, I'll relent on B because I think B could be a little too harsh for them. No, I, I, I'll say, I'll say B. That's fine. I, I, I can agree with that. There's oh, nothing in B okay. either. Now. I was gonna say A behind RDAI, but really, my gut's telling me B. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think you've argued that well. Like, the if if you, I think the Illyrian Kingdom is one of those where if you're playing on a low difficulty, that will be probably one of the most fun campaigns that you could play. Like, out of all the factions. Mm -hmm. Um. If the Antigonids, because the Antigonids aren't going to attack you, and then you have your pick of your choice of enemies, because you start at war with the Epirus, so you can kind of just do what you want, really, and just have some fun. But I think if you're playing on hard or very hard, you are right. Like the Antigonids are just going to come down on you like like a sack of bricks, unless you're fort walling, which you could. Uh, from what I've seen on the Discord, there's like. Uh, quite a good tactic of fort walling a couple of the valleys and then the Antigonids can't actually get to you. Um, yeah, but fort costs a lot more now. Yeah, exactly. So, so it's, not, it's not like the Illyrian yeah. economy is a strength. Um, I'm going to build, I'm going to see what a fort costs. I think 3,000. 3,000 to build a fort. Holy crap. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, yeah, like you say, very difficult, but I'm happy to put them in B because I think we're waiting, like, the strength of the faction a lot higher in this than my just oh that's cool <laughs> so yeah <laughs> yeah and like they, they aren't that strong yeah they could get eaten up easily yeah I think there's a reason historically that the rdai and then the labeate were become the kind of the quote-unquote hegemon of illyria yeah um and why the illyrian kingdom quote-unquote didn't last super long mm. once that glaucius and um uh, those dudes kind of ran out um like once yeah. Matilda, once this guy that you're playing with at the beginning mytilos dies i mean they became i mean it was rdai's turn right so that mm. just shows you how fragile yeah this kingdom was so 
I think I think I think we can agree on a on a solid B there. Um, but on to the Labeateans. Where mm. would you uh, where would you place these guys? So honestly, and again, this is based on what beta testers have reported. This is actually one of the more easier campaigns. Oh, really? Um, yes, because you start allied, really, really good allies with the RDAI and the Illyrian Kingdom. So mm -hmm. it allows you, and you have multiple routes of expansion early. So you can take the city on the coast, Ulkinion, first. Yeah. That would be a bloody battle. But once you take that, Skodra, your capital is right there to... Um, retrain kind of uh, yeah you retrain um same thing with Durnion as the cg you're not i don't think you're allied to the cg i want to check the diplomacy while i say that um labeate's l diplomatic standing um you also have enderon which we found out from your video is a village yeah, and you might be kind of pushing it with the RDAI at that point, but if you're able to take that, you also have uh, the Peyrus Diopolis settlement, mm. and you have the Atari Diopolis settlement too. Yeah, and you're not allied to the CG, so you're only allied to the RDAI and Illyrian Kingdom. So you mm. can kind of dance around early turns around those two factions getting your economy built up. And if you were able to take Enderon, Perus Diopolis, and Atari Atari Diopolis, you kinda have the upper hand on the RDAI from the north. Yeah. Uh I think as I mean, well, like yeah. if you take Rhizon from the RDAI, they pretty much don't have anywhere else they can Oh group. yeah, I mean that's so... a trap too. I mean, <laughs> so they'll could, be you dead. Could, <laughs> you could take Rhizon and Lithos early you could probably honestly knowing how you like to play you could skip Ulkinion because it's just going to sit there take Ryzon come back retrain take Lissos come back retrain and then take out the CGs and rebels around you hmm. you then have three capital cities and the surrounding area so any strength that the RDAI in the Illyrian Kingdom could muster would be little to none at that point i would be more concerned about the dardani knocking on the door yeah um so i would put them i'd probably put them as an a Oof. Oof. because Oof. also the coolness factor that symbol that color and they get the southern illyrian roster yeah and they get the 304 their own 304 as a reform okay okay i'll put them as a <laughs> but question, are they are they easier or harder than the R? Well, RDA is harder, but they're just better. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll give you. It's that. just more interesting. Uh, I think the Labeateans, like again, just not and and also you also have that. I just think not not quite as interesting, but also you have the problem of like exactly what you said for the Illyrian Kingdom. If you do go south, or the Illyrian Kingdom gets taken out, then you are basically at war with Macedon again. So, like, start, I think you're going to be good, but mid to late game could be a struggle. Mid to late game would be a slog. Yeah. Um, but let's move on to the Laburni then, and I think have to go in S tier. Easiest Illyrian start by far. Most cities making loads of money uh, as soon as you, you can take out that I I've done two like of my, in my own time playthroughs like as the Laburni up to I don't know turn 50 60 something like that guys and um yeah you can take out the Iapodes and the history pretty much within the first five turns uh really easily really really easily and then you're just making a ton of money and then all you have to then deal with is the Del Mate who will probably attack you at that point. And you can deal with them pretty quickly. Then you've got Issa. You can just, and then just roll down the coast. Like, your roster isn't great, because you are the Northern Illyrians. Like, you get some Laburni pirates, but they're trash. <laughs> they're, uh, 304 are fantastic, though. 
So if you do get them, but you get them after reforms. So your starting roster before the reforms is not great, but after reforms, you're going to be able to have a relatively strong roster. Um, no good cavalry, so get some um, Greek cavalry if you can from AOR or uh, or something like that. But yeah, um, I think they're, they're just a really easy faction and also quite fun. Um, so yeah, uh, I would put them in the S. Mm. I'd have to agree with you on this one because I think this is for me my one solid S faction. Yeah, I do. I've actually thought about nerfing them a little bit, um, just because historically from Jottle video they kind of declined at this mm. time, and the Iapodes kind of took over. So I've thought about nerfing them a bit. Um, it's just when they start with so much land. Um, you know, it's like, what do you do? So, I might look into that in the future, but for who they are in this release, yeah, like, they have an excellent roster. I mean, the, they got the they got the boys, the clubmen. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they also have an upgrade to that in the Marines. Oh, yeah, the and Marines like, are good as well, yeah. Yeah, and then you mentioned the 304 OI, too. So, um, and honestly, uh, as an aggressive player, once you took out the history and Iapodes, Illyria is pretty much yours at that yeah. point because you're forcing everything south and um, you have a huge um, cushion of rebel yeah. stacks protecting you from the north, from the boy eye or anybody that would have come down from there. And if you really were brave and ambitious, <laughs> you could raid the coast and just exterminate settlements in Italy yeah. and then come back yeah. and then continue conquering the Balkans. And then honestly, that would be an interesting campaign because by then you'd have the full Illyrian AOR to challenge the Antigonids or yeah. Epirus, whoever yeah. was winning down there. So I think I think it would be a very easy early to mid with a very interesting and challenging late campaign. Yeah, and so that's for sure. And they're the, they're cool navy blue that the Liberna the Liberna ship, and they have their own culture. So yeah, they're cool. Yeah, definitely. And as you say, once the Iapodes and the uh the history are gone, you 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 have won Illyria. <laughs> so um like because everyone else down south of you is gonna be taking chunks out of each other and you can just go through making an absolute ton of money, build up a full stack and just roll down the coast, killing everyone mm -hmm. in your path. So yeah, it's a very, very good faction. Um so finally the Illyrian cultural generics I don't know how we're going to rate them. <laughs> I would just put them in the middle because <laughs> they're, they're the cultural generic, but what do you think? A, baby. A? <laughs> wow. No. Why? I'm joking. Um, I'll probably just put them in, in D because they're not played really. Um, yeah, I it's think not... it's good to include them because they are part of the game. Um, they're I'll not be, meant it, to be playable. Hard. They're not meant to be playable, but, you know... Just to give them some love, I mean, you have Amantia, Olympe, and Billis Nikea, which were very well known, attested settlements. They might have, they could be Greek, they could be their own faction, um, but they didn't do anything politically. They were just really strong and Hellenistic, mm. uh, but they never did anything politically. Um, you have Hiscana with the Paneste, they have their own ALR unit. Um, they resisted Macedon for a long time. So kudos to them. Journey on like a fortified settlement. The Atari Atai are really the nucleus and yeah. the heart of this faction because they used to be the greatest Illyrian nation of all time before the Celts came. So we have homage to them. And then we have the Illyri the Pannonian boys up north. The Bruci, which were mm. part of that great revolt against the Romans. And then, like I said earlier in the video, Segestica, the best defended settlement uh, in northern Illyria. So um i mean d because you can't play them and they're just like a rebel but just wanted to give them, them their love yeah. and um you know make them make sure that they're appreciated yeah fantastic well let's have a look at how we actually ranked them then so as you can see we've got my ranking on the top and then a Hal's on the bottom here and uh i think like we've like when we rank them, we rank them 
based on how everyone else in the world ranks them. <laughs> Which is how much they like the faction. How cool they think the faction is. <laughs> yeah. Um, anybody that knows either of us could quickly guess whose is who. Yeah. yeah. Apart from Mosca. Apart from Mosca. <laughs> who got it wrong (laughs) but yeah like i've gone for like the the laburni the illyrian kingdom the dardanians at the top because i think they're you know laburni's just so strong they have to be at the top but the dardanians illyrian kingdom really interesting campaigns um and then we got the del mate and the rdai both like right in the thick of the action so yeah again interesting um and then day city eights is quite high for me but not as high as you but uh, that's just because, again, very hard. So, I don't know. I kind of weight the difficulty. Like, if it's harder, it's better. <laughs> and uh, I just find it more interesting. Whereas some of the others, like, the history I oppose, again, quite low. But And the Lebeateans, because they're so easy. But um, how about you? How how uh, how do you explain this, uh, this, this ranking, I think? Mm, I like yours. I think yours is... Um, I know you well enough. That makes a lot of sense, to be honest. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, why about why the CG though? Oh, I um, that was just like put it in the middle because it's not really meant to be playable. So it's just on sure. there in the middle. <laughs> sure. no. no, I like I like it. It makes a lot of sense. Very logical compared to mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, well you got day city eights at the top and i i think i know why it's because you love the the underdogs you love the the factions that are that not many people like to play and that are just like kind of more obscure is that right right the more question marks surrounding the faction the more i like them. so the day city eights were a hard fight five- presence because I think I'm just obsessed with Pannonia because there's not a lot of info on it. And getting the info that I did get, um, I wanted to represent like all the different tribes, but mm. none of the Pannonian mm. tribes have hardly any information on. Them. So yeah, I'm 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 happy that we had a Decitiates faction because it was the closest thing we could get to a Pannonian faction. Uh, I really became obsessed over Pannonia as we were studying the map and everything. Partly because there's hardly any information on it. So mm. uh, any, any any areas where there is no information, I wanted it. So as I started figuring out tribes and cities and whatever, I would start kind of hyper obsessing over factions to potentially add and play as. Because for me, representation is such a key part of uh, what RAS is. And whenever I play games, especially strategy games, I always like to play the more obscure factions like Rome Total War Vanilla I love playing as like Namidia, Thrace, <laughs> um, Pontus, Britons, just not Namidia uh, bro. Germans, <laughs> German just factions that are kind of out of the way and not like the main factions, Scythia, Dacia, those kinds. Um so yeah the Dacity eights are kind of like my faction for the Illyrians. Like that's kind of like the faction that it's like, oh, yeah, it's so cool that we have this in. Um, and poor Jottle had such a hard time constructing their roster because we just know hardly anything. Um, but he did a good job. And um, I had so much fun watching you and uh, our interview playing as them mm. and uh, excited to play them as well. Yeah. So that's why they're my number one. Cool. And you've you've obviously um, got similar similar thinking to me with the Illyrian Kingdom and the Dardanians quite close to the uh, yeah the top. So Dardanians are super cool too, just because they're so unique. They're not quite Illyrian. They're not quite quite Thracian. Yeah, that's why they get get the Dardanian culture. And then Illyrian Kingdom again, I think interesting find by Jottle, and he really really like fought to get that in as a faction. And I kind of like it because it's kind of an amalgamation of different tribes under a kingdom um with a glorified history and they have such a hard start so that's cool the labete and the iapodes are just for me they're very meh like like not it's like whatever they're kind of like why whatever tier 
history, I have them there and not in D because they're incomplete. Um, I don't know where I stand on them yet because they're not complete. And then uh, the big boys, the most famous ones, right? The ones that are like... <laughs> just you know oh i can't wait to play as this faction like those factions i'm like yeah i don't want anything to do with them this is this is there's a popular, the popular ones i don't like the popular factions it's like <laughs> it, it's just like if everybody screams oh i can't wait to play the rda I, well that's faction i ain't gonna play well this is so, this is coming from the guy yeah this is coming from the guy who when i was debating which faction to play i was like I'm thinking of doing the RDA I now, but I like the Dardanians and the uh, the Liberni as well. But what do you think? And you said RDA I. <laughs> yeah, because everybody everybody will understand it. Everybody yeah. will know. No, I'm joking. But yeah, no, the RDA I, the RDA I, yeah, I understand why you why you've got them at the bottom because obviously everyone wants to play those ones. So um, yeah, if it was my my list is like, would I play them? Yeah. Same. Highest to lowest, yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. I think um, yeah. Mine's mine's the same. Like the history and the iapodes don't really want to play them. The Beateans. I'm sorry, guys. I'm <laughs> sorry, Monty. But yeah, no, not really uh, interested to play them. Day City Eight's definitely got an interest to play. RDAI Del Mate definitely, and Dardanians, the Burnian uh, Illyrian Kingdom. Yeah, I uh, love playing. Um. Well, all from A and S. I, I really enjoy those factions. So, um, so mine, yeah. We're, I think we're both on the same page, really. Just obviously different preferences. <laughs> well, I really think that the history and the iapodes are going to be a lot more interesting when the Celts are done. Oh yeah, definitely. It's I, we're going to have to revisit for sure. Mm. Well, I think that's um, I think that's everything though. And like I say, guys, if you want to comment uh so if you want to do this the link will be down in the description put it into the developer diaries and uh, let us see your ranking for the uh for the factions and let us know how you rank them obviously all rankings are subjective guys so like <laughs> there's going to be many different ones as you can see how different mine and ahals are so like all rankings are pretty subjective um but yeah uh, and comment down below what you think of our rankings. It's probably all going to be hate comments saying we're absolutely trash, but uh, we're ready. We're ready. We're, we're anticipating. We're ready for that. Um, but thank you yeah. very much for watching, guys. Uh, please do like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out. And I will see you all again on the next video.